Hello and welcome to the Wolverton Workshop. In this video we will look at how I recreated the boiler workshop at Bridge North Station for my Engage Layout, Wolverton North. Please stand back from the platform edge. For the next project on the layout I wanted to replicate another fairly simple building, so I chose the boiler workshop located towards the rear of Bridge North Station on the Seven Valley Railway. Thankfully, because the SVR are carrying out a lot of construction projects in Bridger North, I was able to obtain planning documents that included scale site plans of the complete station. Using these, I was able to get the basic measurements for the boiler workshop, and along with a few trips to gather reference photos, I was able to start designing the building in 3D. I am using the same method I used for my previous building, where I will produce a solid inner shell on my larger 3D printer, then create a set of skins on my resin printer to attach to this inner shell. These will provide the finer details. The exterior on this building is pretty simple. There are only four windows and a single door, so it didn't take very long to design. The inner shell was designed in three parts. There is a base plate with a groove around the edge that the wall sections fit into. The walls will eventually be glued down to this base. Then there is the large roof section that is a push fit onto the walls. The base plate also includes cutout channels to accept the embedded rails. Here are all the exterior skins that will be applied to the building's walls. They were designed and printed with the window frames already in place, so I can just add glazing behind these to complete the windows. The main roof skins were printed in three sections, simply because as a single piece they wouldn't fit on my printer. Here is the building with the skins fully applied and ready to be painted. I printed four skylights in clear resin. It's worth pointing out it's almost impossible to print something that is optically transparent on a resin printer, but you do get this perfect frosted glass finish. These were then added to the roof and the frames were painted black with a touch of silver. Most of the roof was then given a light blue-grey colour, with only the front being painted in this sandy yellow. The whole roof, including the skylights, was then given a layer of weathering. The exterior walls were painted to represent the red bricks. I then carefully masked off and painted the horizontal bands of blue engineering bricks. As you can see, the joints between the skins are quite visible, but these will be hidden once the drain pipes are added. Next, I install the windows, which are simply some pieces of acrylic. In scale size these would be unrealistically thick, but you can't really tell and with the thickness they sit flush with the interior walls. I wanted to have the main door open so I could run wagons and locos into the building. This meant it would be possible to see into the building, and that gave me the excuse to fully detail the interior. I added some blockwork texture to the inside walls which is a scale scenes file printed onto matte photo paper. The roof section was also lined in a similar fashion. I then fitted the main infrastructure onto the interior walls of the building. This comprised of an overhead crane and a small office. The base plate was given a few coats of filler primer before painting grey-brown. The walkway was added and the whole floor was weathered suitably. Originally I wasn't going to bother with any internal roof dressing, but as I would have to put something there to hold the lighting I thought I might as well just add the dressing anyway. It's built up from several parts that once glued together fit snugly into the roof. Before this was glued into place I fitted the LEDs and carefully ran the wires down the trusses. These are just held in place with tiny pieces of black tack. To allow the roof to remain removable, I fitted a connector that plugs into a socket mounted in the top of the small office. I was then able to glue the walls down to the base and start to make an empty space look like a fully functioning workshop. Around the walls will be a number of racking units. I designed and printed a few different styles, as well as these shelf fillers, which were printed separately because I thought it might be impossible to paint if they were already in the racking. For the smaller racking, there's some totes as well as random boxes and cylinders. For the larger pallet racking, I printed some empty pallets as well as some with collars and also some crates. To fill the middle of the room, I've modelled a number of loco boilers to represent those being worked on. These are all based on drawings of real boilers I was able to get hold of. There's a Jinty, a Standard 2, a Standard 4 and a Hall class. Along with the boilers and the finished racking, I also modelled and printed a whole host of smaller parts that will go into the boiler shop. There's bins, tables, gas bottles, welding equipment, barrels, consumable storage, racking parts, ladders, boiler parts, pallets, a wood store and a few chairs. Some of these parts are truly tiny. The part I was most impressed with is the valve gear on the top of the welding gas bottle. Here it is next to the nib of a biro pen. To say this was tricky to paint would be an understatement. Gluing down all these parts was very fiddly, but I really enjoyed the process of giving the space a real sense of a busy workshop. 
It was only at this point I decided to include what I believe are the toilets. They form a wedge-shaped link between the boiler shop and the machine shop. The idea is to use the machine shop to house the lighting controls for both the boiler and the loco shed. The machine shop itself doesn't have any external windows which makes it ideal to house electronics. The toilet block itself is made up of a single inner shell with front and rear wall skins and a roof skin. Once painted to match the brickwork on the boiler shop, these were installed onto the rear of the building. I also added some LEDs to the crane uprights to provide lower level lighting. These wires are simply hidden under some covers and run through a hole in the wall into the connecting building. With all the interior details now finished, the doors and drain pipes were installed and the building was complete. Now this building's complete, it's time to start on the next one. I built something from Wolverton and something from Bridge North, so I thought I'd choose a building from the final station on the layout, Loughborough. This little building that sits a little off the end of the platform will be my next building project. And that's it for this video, so until next time, thanks for watching. Please.